saving lives, or powering extinctions. It's all in how you drive. A few months back, we talked about a new tool in genetic modification called CRISPR-Cas9. This technology is based on bacterial immune systems, and it will allow us to make edits to an organism's genome with more speed, accuracy, and ease than ever before. And in this exciting new landscape of genetic modification and synthetic biology, there's one particular application I wanted to talk about — gene drives. These have the potential to save millions of lives and give us unprecedented control over the natural world. They also could potentially come with some major risks that need to be studied and understood. So before we get started, what exactly are gene drives? Gene drives work by biasing the inheritance of genes. Normally, a sexually reproducing organism comprises its genome 50-50 from the genetic information of its parents. Gene drives change this. In a literal sense, a gene drive is a mechanism, such as CRISPR, attached to an organism's chromosomes, and it actually biases the way those genes are passed along. Instead of there being a 50% chance of passing along a marked gene, you could have a near 100% chance of passing it down to offspring, and that offspring would have a near 100% chance of passing it along to its offspring, and so on. What this means in the real world is that we could use gene drives to spread genetic modifications in the wild to any organism that reproduces sexually and has a relatively fast reproductive cycle. And here's the crazy thing. Those genetic modifications don't necessarily benefit the organism. They could reduce its fitness. In other words, gene drives could literally break the rules of natural selection. For example, let's talk about malaria. The World Health Organization said that in 2015, there were 214 million cases of malaria, and 438,000 people died of the disease. Malaria is carried by mosquitoes, so what if we could genetically modify mosquitoes so that they were incapable of carrying malaria? But how can you ensure that the genetically modified mosquito will pass that genetic information sufficiently in the wild? With normal mating, the engineered mosquitoes might not reproduce quickly enough, and that genetic information could fade away. But with gene drives, it could persist, and within a couple of years, you could eliminate malaria-carrying mosquitoes. Or how about in the case of invasive species? For example, humans introduced rats to the Galapagos Islands, and rats remain an enormous threat to Galapagos tortoises, so much so that conservationists have resorted to using rat poison in great amounts. But what if you could genetically modify a rat so that it produces more male offspring than female offspring? Spring. After a few generations of this, you wouldn't have enough female rats to perpetuate the species, and it would disappear from the island. Ah, I hear you ask. What happens if one of these genetically modified rats makes it back to the mainland? Yeah, that would be a huge problem. And there are a lot of bioethicists who suggest we use extreme caution before ever using gene drives in a practical application in the real world. And there are a lot of researchers who are working on parallel safety measures to go along with gene drives, such as requiring there be specific genetic elements in place for the gene drive to persist. And after a few generations, those genetic elements begin to disappear, and the gene drives are no longer viable. That limits how many generations of organisms actually have that gene drive. Even with those safety measures in mind, we need to remember that gene drives have the potential for great good and great harm. So I've got a question for all of you. Do you think gene drives are a good tool for us to use in the future? If so, in what capacity? And what safety measures do you think we need to put in place to keep it in check? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring our show and making it possible. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that little like button and subscribe to the channel to join the forward-thinking think tank. Finally, check out these other amazing videos about our future right over here.